Hi, my name is John Harrell, and I'm the president of Lighthouse Lab Services. So I think we're at a really important moment in the history of the lab industry. We're coming out of this pandemic, moving into an endemic, and the tendency, I think, will be to go back to what we used to do pre-pandemic. But I think there were a lot of lessons learned and um, things that we got better at as an industry during this time that I hope will carry on into the future. So a few of those things are um, the use of telemedicine to authorize laboratory testing. Um, I think that got really accelerated. It existed before. It was cumbersome. There was a lot of regulatory. Those were relaxed and I'm hoping it stays that way. But I also think that um, labs have partners now that do telemedicine and are capable of doing and offering that service. Um, having a direct relationship with patients, uh, pop-ups, mobile, drive-through, all of these things were really new. Um, some of the technology around that, like QR codes and text-based ordering and resulting, all, all newer or not something that we had seen at any scale in the lab industry prior to the pandemic. I hope we keep that because I think that when the laboratory has a direct relationship with a patient, um, there's a lot more uh, strategy and you're in a much better position when you have that relationship than when you're beholden to uh, having your laboratory wait for a physician to order a test and send it to you. I think that throughout the pandemic, the work that medical laboratory scientists do um, was spotlighted and I think that the value of that was seen and I think it was a scarcity. We already had a scarcity of medical laboratory scientists in the country. It got really critical. As a result of that, we saw some of the biggest gains in wages for medical laboratory scientists that we'd seen in a very long time. Typically, um, when wages go up, they don't come down real quickly. Hopefully, we'll be able to hold on to that post-pandemic, but uh, molecular scientists in particular uh, very sought after. So anyone that could say PCR or knew what it stood for uh, was in very high demand throughout the last couple of years. And so we saw salaries go up uh, for molecular scientists for sure, but also for general medical laboratory scientists as they sought to backfill some of those positions and vacancies. I'm really hoping that that uh, increased wage stays around. I think that there's going to continue to be a need for this skill set, right? So for every two people that retire, only one new person comes into the field. That really hasn't changed. There's going to be an incremental shortage that gets worse year after year, and that's going to continue to um, drive demand for medical laboratory scientists and people that work in labs. So one of the reasons that there's a shortage of medical laboratory scientists nationwide and medical laboratory technicians is the shift schedule wages and stress involved with that job are high. The wages don't re really reflect that and the hours are difficult. And so as we now these last two years have seen an increase in wage, I think we'll do a little bit better job of recruiting uh, medical laboratory professionals. I also think the pandemic um, made a lot of people more aware of what medical laboratory scientists do. And so there's probably a generation of people that having seen COVID testing happen and know what's involved with that might be more interested in going into that field. I think we need more schools. That's really the answer. Uh, we used to have 660 schools uh, about 20 years ago that put out medical lab scientists. Now we're down to, I think, under 210. And the reason for that is, is it's expensive to run a medical laboratory program and uh, labs had a hard time or schools had a hard time finding labs that would be rotations for them. Um, so if you're a laboratory out there, you're concerned about the laboratory staffing shortage, one of the bigger things you could do for the industry as well as for yourself is partner with a local school, provide clinical rotations. You're going to be able to attract talent easier that way and we're also going to bring more people into the field. I'm often asked by laboratories that are having trouble finding talent, what they can do. Um, I tell them the first thing you can do is retain the talent that you already have. And in order to do that, you're gonna to need to treat them right. You're gonna to need to value the work that they're doing. You need to pay them appropriately. Um, you need to work with them um, for their work life, personal life balance, schedules, things of that nature. So I'd say first and foremost, treat the people that you have well so that they stay around. Secondly, I would look at uh, clinical rotations. Try to find schools in your area that maybe are bringing new people into the field um, that are looking to get their clinical rotation done. See if you can bring them in and have them rotate through your departments. Uh, great way to attract talent. 
Um, paying them well is, a, is another one. I know that that's challenging. Uh, hospitals in particular, I think, have felt the pain of this throughout the pandemic. Private labs have been able to respond and increase salaries as demand increased and the market increased. Uh, hospitals have lagged that. Uh, as a result of that, we're running a national survey for medical laboratory professionals, their wages as well as their morale to give um, data to those laboratory managers and directors so that they can go to their HR departments, their C-suite and justify and say, here's what salaries look like nationally. Here's why we need to increase um, above what we've done historically. Because we did see salaries go up quite a bit in the medical lab um, industry over the course of the, the pandemic and hospitals need to catch up.